tell. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner. More than victorious. I'm an heir of his kingdom. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on and clap. Oh. The greater one lives inside of me. His name. His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner. I'm born a winner. More than Victoria. More than Victoria. I'm an heir. I'm an heir of this kingdom. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost. The greater one lives inside of me. His name. His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner. I'm born a winner. More than Victoria. More than Victoria. I'm an heir. I'm an heir of this kingdom. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Rejoice. Rejoice.
lift your hands as you bless him. Just bless you, lift your hands. We're going to bless the Lord with everything that's inside of us this morning. And come on, I just want you to open up your mouth and bless him and glorify him. Yeah, all over the room, all over the room, all over the room. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bless his name. Yes, God. Now, I want you to open up your mouth and give God the best praise that you can give him. Come on. Open your mouth and bless him. Open your mouth and magnify him. Open your mouth and exalt him. Open your mouth and praise him. Yeah, yeah. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise him enough. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on. Father, we honor you today, and we glorify you and bless you declaring that you're sovereign, declaring that you're holy, declaring that you're righteous, declaring that you do everything well. We come into your presence, God, to know you better. We come into your presence to experience you. We come into your presence to know you, God, as our king and as our leader and as our savior. We are humbled, God, that you would allow us to glorify you, that you would allow us to be instruments in your hands to bless and exalt your kingdom. Kingdom of God come and will of God be done in the hearts and the lives and the minds and the spirit and the very will of your people. You are our king and there is no other. That's a good place to clap right there. I said you are our king and there is no other. Oh, come on, that's a good place to clap right there. You are our king and there is no other. You are our God, and there is no other. You are our Savior, and there is no other. You are our King, and there is no other. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Somebody bless the Lord. Even in your home, bless Him. Even in your home, magnify Him home exalted even where you are give the Lord the glory and the honor and the praise hallelujah sovereign God you're such a sovereign God you're a sovereign God sovereign God and you rule and you reign rule and you reign you're a sovereign God Sovereign God, you're a sovereign God, and you rule and you reign, and you rule and you reign. Just lift your hands up and say, God, rule in me. Yeah, God, rule in me. My thinking, my seeing, my living, my doing, God, reign in me. Every thought I have, let it be from you. Every way I see, let it be your expect perspective. You're my God. I am your child, the sheep of your pasture. Be glorified and be exalted. I give my life over now. I give my life over now. I give my life over now to represent you and to honor you in everything that you call me to put my hands to. Spirit of the Lord, I declare your healing anointing that none would get glory for it but you. Let it be activated and released now. The breaking of shackles, the loosening of mind, the transformation of the very soul of man and woman, let it manifest now. Let it be experienced in our midst, God. Heal, Lord, and let all the glory and the honor go to you. Demonstrate your greatness, God, and let there be none who gets any part of your glory. God, be exalted and lifted up. 
but there is none like you in all of the earth. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Have your way among us today. Amen, amen, and amen. I want you to clap with the best clap that you can give God in this building. Hallelujah. 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 All over the building. All in your house, your home, your car, your job, wherever you are. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. We will bless the Lord at all times. And His praise will continually be in our mouth. In Jesus' name, somebody shout! It's a joy to stand with you and stand before you, knowing that God's given us another opportunity to serve him, another opportunity to know him better, to, to search him out, another opportunity for our ways to become the ways of the Lord. And we welcome you to Life Center International, Marietta, Georgia. Amen. We thank God for Life Center International. Marietta, Georgia, knowing that the greater Atlanta region has a major part to play in what God is looking to do in the earth. And those of you that are tuning in from Marietta especially, I, uh, I applaud you. I thank God for you. And I'm blessed that you've come back to, to join with us today as we celebrate the Lord. But you've brought somebody else with us, with you. You've told someone else about this ministry that is a church plant. Uh, in the city of Marietta and so thank you so much for that it means everything just going back to that a little bit uh, I know that this is a, a strange time I mean a strange thing to plant a church virtually but I also know that these are strange times and often the body of Christ is the last to respond to things that they should respond to uh, as it relates to touching and impacting culture and touching the lives of people. And many ministries stream all over the country, but not a lot of ministries plant a church uh, through a streaming component. And that's just what we're doing uh, for the last two weeks. I thank God for all of you that tuned in on last week. According to our calculations, hundreds of you plugged in. Can we thank God for that? hundreds of you plugged in to, uh, to hear the word of the Lord and to discover this new thing that God is, uh, is doing in your midst. Uh, again, I'm Terrell Murphy, the founder of Life Center International Ministries, uh, the apostle here at Life Center International, Marietta, and I am just grateful that you're allowing uh, my life and the vision that God's given me uh, to impact you in some manner, in some way. Please be mindful that my entire ministry uh, life began in Atlanta, Georgia, and the Lord sent me from Atlanta to uh, Huntersville, North Carolina, where I planted a work there, and then God transitioned me out of that seven years ago and uh, gave me vision and wisdom to plant Life Center International in Charlotte, North Carolina. And then about a year and a half ago, the Lord began to speak to me and tell me he wanted me to plant a church in Marietta. And I want you to understand as being the recipient of that church plant that that just shows the love that God has for you. That there are many things that are happening in the city of Atlanta. There are some things that we carry as Life Center International that are not in Marietta, are not moving in their fullness in Marietta. But then there are some things that are happening in Marietta that we don't carry. My point for saying that is that I know that God has called us to join with ministries in the greater Atlanta region so that the main thing can remain the main thing, and that's Jesus Christ and his lordship being lifted up uh, above a people and above a region and above industry. And so we're just declaring an agreement. I hope you'll agree with me that Jesus is truly Lord over Marietta, Georgia. And I'm just believing that the Lordship of Christ through Life Center International is going to continue 
to manifest in great ways in the lives of so many people that are tuning in, even people that we have no idea of that are plugged in, who will plug in weeks from now, months from now, even years from now. Did I say years from now? I surely did because this is not a fly-by-night thing. This is not just something to do to get more views and to get more recognition uh, for myself. Uh, read my bio. I am far from having to get or look after uh, uh, recognition. My days for that are over, and I can say that was a lot of my desire when I was just a youngin' in, uh, in ministry. I'm from North Carolina, so we say youngin' uh, in North Carolina. But when I was just a, a youngin' in North Carolina in ministry, yeah, there was a lot in me that desired to be known, to be recognized, and I uh, did a lot to develop myself so that people would take notice of me because that's the way that I thought that ministry was supposed to be and supposed to go. Uh, but as I matriculated through life and, and God did a lot of things with me suddenly from 2003 to 2010, uh, I, he, he, he met every desire that was inside of me to be known and recognized and then had me to transition out of my spiritual father's house and start a new work uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina called Life Center International. And in that uh, was tremendous breaking of God. And it was breaking me so that the things that I thought were what made a successful or significant church, uh, he began to show me that those aren't really the things that build a strong church. They're the things that will build big crowds and they're the things that will make you popular and uh, cause people to desire you more than God. And uh, I just came into a place where I realized that a lot of what I was doing as it represented church and a lot of what is happening in the body of Christ now has very little to do with God and his order and his design. And I, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I almost shriek sometimes when I think of what is being built out and called the body of Christ and uh, so much of it is so far from God we're not perfect but there is some revelation and insight that the Lord has given us into some things that would help us to become strengthened in our walk and to be able to provide a level of ministry ministry revelation uh, ministry direction and insight that's more aligned with what God wants uh, from the New Testament and I believe that you're listening today because there's something in you that says there's a little bit more that I need in my walk with God there's something in you that is saying that God's calling me into something new some of you haven't been to church in a long long time and you maybe even gave up on church and believe that it just wasn't anything that the Lord wanted you to do or that you wanted to do right now in your life which is further from the truth in both aspects of that the Lord is coming into your life even right now because he's saying come back home come back into the place of my kingdom learn of my kingdom learn of me learn of my dear son Jesus Christ and live in all the benefits that Christ has uh, provided for us and then there's some of you that uh, you know that your time is up in the ministry that you're in and that's one reason why we've come to Marietta Georgia as well is that there are many people who know their time is up in ministry and they're familiar with all the ministries in Charlotte and I mean in Marietta and just don't really know if there's anywhere else to go or in Atlanta and uh, I believe that the Lord has joined us together that uh, you would be able to hear the sound of the Lord that is coming out of this ministry and see exactly how God wants that to be built out in your life and then there's others like you where the Lord came to me and said after many 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 years to get out of my father's house and uh, I, I wasn't afraid of that call I, I wasn't uh, intimidated by it at all I was just obedient to it and some of you the Lord is calling you into a place of obedience where you say you know I know that I've grown here and grown there but my time is up and the Lord is transitioning me and shifting me into a greater level of ministry that represents maybe some maturity and some knowledge that I haven't carried in the ministry that I'm in. And again, this may be some of you in all three categories or one category or two that I've discussed, but of the three, I'm sure that you've been discovered somewhere in there. And so I want you to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. 
and not what man is saying or what woman is saying. And if the Lord is calling you to shift, then, uh, then you probably need to make sure that you move with God. Uh, transition is never an easy thing. When the Lord called me, I was uh, leading an, a, a mega congregation in a, in a, a huge $20 million facility, 85,000 square feet, thousands of members. Uh, but the Lord said, it's time to shift. And uh, so I understand what it's like to be in a place and be there for many years. But then the Lord call you into something else. I trust that you do these things prayerfully. You move through them prayerfully. Uh, but we would love for you to be a part of Life Center International. God's connected me with a core team I've been working with for about uh, a little over a year now. And I appreciate them and honor them and love them. And uh, we're just serving Marietta for the glory of God. And so I look forward to, to you joining with them, becoming an active part of Life Center International. I do want to say this, and then we're going to move on. Come on, Pastor Amani, we're going to take offering uh, after this. But I do want to say this and, and, and move on. Uh, I know this is different, but so is society right now. And there are many different ways that corporate America industry is having to go about the things that it has to do. And so it is with Life Center International Ministries in Charlotte and in Marietta. We're having to move in some ways that are just not traditional. And so I, I know that wherever you joined the church before, there was someone that ministered and then someone that says you can come and join and you walk down an aisle and you hug the pastor and people were clapping for you and then they uh, whisked you away into a room and you filled out information and, uh, and, and, and then you became a member and you went through an orientation and, and got acclimated to that ministry and began to move through it. We'd love to be able to do that and those were exactly what our intentions were. But things shifted as God is resetting our entire world. Hear this, he's resetting. And often the church and the people of God are the slowest to respond to resettings. It's why often the church is reacting instead of acting. And so I want to say to you that I know this is different and there's no aisle to walk down and there's no one to greet you and there's no room to whisk you away to and no form that you can sign out in a room and learn about the ministry and find out when new member orientation is. But do know that all of that has been accounted for. And you can join this ministry online uh, with knowing that our design is that when we move through some of the challenges of this COVID-19 era or, or dispensation, we will be in a physical structure and we will be there uh, with you weekly to share and minister and serve with you. But right now we're doing it in the way that gives God worship, but in a way that is the most safe. And so uh, it may seem a little strange when I give you information at the end of this gathering, which allows you to be prayed for or allows you to receive salvation or uh, allows for you to become a member of this church. But no, this is the way that things are being done in 98, 99% of the churches in America. Maybe you haven't done it before, but that doesn't mean it's not being done like this. This is called new normals. And I just want to uh, uh, move you away from any thinking in your mind that's blocking you because hundreds of you, hundreds of you uh, tuned in last week, but uh, there was not a move of God for new membership, salvation, and prayer because you're trying to figure this thing out. Well, I'm telling you, it's not going away for a long time, but we would love for you to be plugged in even now uh, because your membership is covered. If you don't have a church home, you need to be in a church. You need to have a place where you can be prayed for. You need to be in a place where uh, you can grow in the things of God. And that's just what we will tap you into and plug you into at Life Center International, our ministries, but Life Center International Marietta. So I just wanted to put those things out to you, some things that I know you're thinking about and wondering. But, and, and, and don't be concerned because some of your friends may say, you joined an online church you know, tell them, well, you still checking on that online dating service, aren't you? you you're trying to find a lover through uh, 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 digitally. I'm just finding a church digitally. Hey, you know, we got to put these things in perspective and quit assigning things to the church that are unfair. 
This is a new way and a new thing that God is doing. And he says, will you not know it? And I don't want any of you to miss the new thing God is doing because this seems a little different. Every move of God that gets ushered into a region or ushered into a dispensation of time is a little different than the last one because God continues to evolve and reveal himself line upon line and precept upon precept. And because there's not a building, don't think that there's not the body of Christ. And I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit later today. Let's receive Pastor Amani as he comes and uh, shares with you. It's time to give. Don't run. Don't give up. Don't turn away. Don't, 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 don't switch to something else because we're going to seed this morning into the kingdom of God and be grateful that the Lord has given us provision. So thank you in advance for that. Let's put our hands together and receive Pastor Amani. All right. All right. Well, like Apostle said, it is that time to give. It is that time of worship. This is not a break in our gathering, but we continue in our worship to the Father as we give. The Bible declares in Joshua 1, 9, it says, Have I not commanded you, be strong, vigorous, and very courageous. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. He's with us in this time in this pandemic, whatever we see, and we understand that we serve a kingdom with a king that is above all other things. His kingdom is above all other kingdoms. And whatever is trying to dictate to you to hold back from the Lord, we're not going to do that because we understand that there are principles of the kingdom that if we give, it's to be given back to us. But he also provides for us because he's a great father and he sees and attends to every one of our needs. And so in this moment right now, what we want to do is there are some declarations that we want to declare. We understand that the word of God is truth. And as we declare these declarations, he hears them and he assigns angelic hosts to move on our behalf to manifest his will in the earth. And so together, what I would love for you to do, wherever you're streaming, and I know those who are right here with us, we're going to say these declarations with uplifted voices. You have to know that we are in the year of the mouth. And as we speak these truths into the atmosphere, God assigns power and angelic hosts to, to, to move on our behalf. And so as we declare it, you have to believe it and you got to adhere to it. And you have to know that God has already moved on your behalf. Remember, he's already commanded you to be strong and vigorous and very courageous. And he says, listen, I'll be with you. So what I want you to do, I don't want you to give just yet, but we're going to declare these declarations and we're going to speak them with authority, with power, with the dominion that God has given us, knowing that he's already moving on our behalf. And then together as a unified people, we're going to give. Amen. So with uplifted voices, wherever you are right there, and I don't want you to be bashful as you are streaming in your home. I need you to say this very loud, even so that your neighbor may be able to hear it. But say it with, declarate, with declarative uh, anointing. All right? Here we go. Jesus is Lord over the earth. The earth with all its fullness belongs to God. As joint heirs with Jesus, I claim the wealth of this earth. Spiritually and financially. For it belongs to Jesus. I delight myself in the word of the Lord. Therefore, I am blessed. My giving releases true spiritual riches that lead to my maturity in the ways of the kingdom of God. Financially, wealth and riches shall be in my house and my righteousness endures forever. For I delight myself in the Lord and his ways. I remember the Lord my God. For it is he that gives me power to get wealth. With me are spiritual and financial riches. And honor, enduring wealth, supernatural edification, and prosperity. I declare, I seek first the kingdom of God. Therefore, everything I need 
shall be added to me. In Jesus' name, we declare these declarations. Amen. Now, I encourage you to go to Life Center Marietta, press the Give Online button, and let's give together. Let's receive the worship team. Amen. chapter Daniel 7 just going to share with you this morning from what I believe the Lord is calling me to to share with you and speak into your spirit and your heart this morning you still got time to reach out to someone and tell them that hey Life Center International in Marietta brand new church plant is on right now 
uh, give them the information so they can stream Life Center, uh, I-N-T-L, Marietta.org. We'd love for them to plug in and be a part of what we're doing right now. So please uh, take time and visit them and invite someone every single week. That would be a great thing to do because uh, many people need to hear what is going on, I believe, in the earth and what God is saying. And I think that we carry a part of that along with so many other ministries that are carrying. But I believe that there are some of you that God has specifically joined and connected to Life Center International. Life Center International, Life Center Marietta.org. Uh, we pray that you'll plug in some other people. Again, good morning to you. Uh, good to see you in the spirit of Christ. Very grateful to the hand of the Lord being upon your life and God leading you and directing you in the ways that he is uh, directing you and ordering your steps. Uh, the Lord loves you very much. And often we don't hear that enough, but the Lord very, loves you very much and wants you to be men and women who are seeking after him, coming into the understanding of him, knowing him better and connecting with him so that the fulfillment of your life would be incredible. I've been in a lot of places, done a lot of things, but there's nothing like living for uh, Christ Jesus. And so I want us to, to move in that and stand in that. And as his word says, in him we live and move and have our being. I do want to make you aware of this uh, there in Marietta at five o'clock today we will be uh, doing back to school prayer for all of our children. If they're going into uh, elementary school, if they're entering their last year of high school, we'll be praying with them at five o'clock today. Note that number, you can dial in and then you've got the conference ID number and we're going to spend some time talking to our children and edifying them. But we want them at peace, we want them covered, we want them uh, moving greatly in advancement this educational year that's going to be very challenging the way things are, are looking right now in this uh, COVID-19 uh, period that we're, we're in but it doesn't mean that our children can't succeed and it doesn't mean that our children can't be great students we want that but we also know that the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous avail much so at five o'clock today uh, and you can bring anyone on that you know. I mean, if you're an auntie and you've got seven or eight nieces and nephews, get them all on. If you're a mom and you know other families who have children, get them on the line. Uh, and we're going to pray for those children today. I'm believing that hundreds of young people are going to be on that line and it's going to impact their lives tremendously. So at five o'clock today, uh, this Sunday, August 16th, we're going to see great prayer in our children and believe for great and awesome transformation. We don't believe in waiting until our children become older to carry the kingdom. We believe in them carrying the kingdom and being instruments of transformation in their schools uh, right now. So I'm going to make sure that we're, we're doing that. Where did I say turn? Daniel 7. Daniel 7 is where I want to start today. Uh, there are, you, you know, you can, you can go through a lot of the streaming mediums and you can find a lot of different messages uh, to people in the body of Christ. And I appreciate all that is being said. But one thing that uh, we try and do in Life Center International Marietta is build people to be able to move through the circumstance and situations of life. Uh, there used to be a commercial long ago, an insurance commercial that says life comes at you fast. And it does come at you very, very fast. And this COVID-19 happening, this societal unrest, the financial challenges that many are in and occupational and entrepreneurial challenges that we're in, all of the different seven mountains, pillars, and all that they're facing. Uh, no one really, really told us about that and that it was coming. And what we've done is we found ourselves in a place where all of a sudden uh, we're having to change. But uh, often change is looked at by the things that we do externally versus the things that happen internally inside of us. To be able to navigate through this season we're in, uh, external change is not enough. 
There's got to be internal change. And I believe in building a people who are able, like troops, to run over walls and to leap over mountains and to move through valleys and to be able to live as overcomers. Uh, God has never called us to exist. God's never called us to just get along. But the Lord wants us to be more than conquerors. He wants us to live as overcomers. And so uh, throughout this pandemic, if some of you are just now tuning in to me and my messages, if you go back on our Life Center International social media page, you'll see that since March, I've been building strategically and systematically uh, to build out a people who are able to endure these times and walk above the things that the adversary meant to put under them. I, uh, I believe that the adversary's hand is very busy working in the lives of people to dissuade them and to get them off track and to move them out of the ways of God and into survival techniques. But uh, what I've been doing is sharing that which will, again, build you so that you can navigate with great success and significance and that you are able to teach others how to move through life. I thank God for the shouting and for the running and for the jumping. But after someone lays hands on you and you get up, you got to do something. And after the shouting, you got to do something. And after the singing, you got to do something. And after the good preaching, you've got to do something. Uh, and so I, I want to share what I believe is my place in the body of Christ, and that's to build out mature believers. Life Center is a place where many men and women come who have grown to a certain level and then they mature more in our house. We do have men and women who come into our house and don't have a lot of spiritual acumen, but they are built as, as well. But we're a house where God is building mature believers who understand the stewardship and the management of the earth. Scripture tells us in the book of Psalms that the heavens God has given to himself, but the earth he's given to the sons of man, which means that men and women and children who call on the name of Jesus are to do more than gather on a Sunday. But we're supposed to be men and women who invoke change in society every single day. And that's the level of maturity that God has called us to build out as Life Center International and being men and women who walk as what we see in the New Testament. It's not just a book of stories and adventure, but it is a book that we're supposed to take hold of and flesh out in our own lives. And so God, as we come together today, we trust that you will lead us in the way we should go. I declare ears are open to hear, minds are open to be transformed, Hearts are open to be shifted. Souls are available for your annihilation of everything in the mind and the will and the emotions that is not like you. Kingdom of God come, will of God be done as I am teaching and shift your people into places of great stature and great obedience that they may live their best life in Jesus Christ and in nothing else. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Again, turn to Daniel, the seventh chapter, starting in the 13th verse. I'm going to read through the 18th, and then I'm going to lift these things up as the Lord uh, leads me. Daniel says this in, uh, in, in, in chapter 7, starting in the 13th verse. He says, I saw in the night visions, and behold, on the clouds of the heavens came one like a son of man. And he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. He sees a night vision. He sees the Son of Man, who is the Christ, who comes to the Ancients of Days, and he's presented before God. And there was given him, him being Jesus. He's in a vision now, speaking the things that have not even occurred. He's speaking now, and it says, And there was given him, talking about Jesus the Messiah, dominion, glory, and kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. So Daniel here points to the fact that Jesus is the eternal Lord over the earth. And there was given to Jesus in this vision that Daniel has dominion. And given to Jesus was glory. And given to Jesus was a kingdom. 
that all the peoples and nations and languages should serve him. That's always been the intent of God. It goes on to say that his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. This is the strength of the kingdom of God. This is the place that God gives it, and God is allowing us to see how incredibly powerful his kingdom is by the fact that this is an everlasting dominion. The kingdom of God is an everlasting dominion, and that's why as believers we are to live out in this kingdom because if we've confessed with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believed in our heart God's raised us from the dead and participated uh, with God, yes, in that, that means our salvation, and in our salvation is this everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingdom is one which shall not be destroyed. The kingdom of God is not a kingdom that has come for a time and then leaves. It's not a kingdom that can be beat down or annihilated or done away with. No, this kingdom is a kingdom that shall not be destroyed, which says a lot for the people who are in that kingdom because those who live in that kingdom are under the umbrella of that kingdom and it keeps them as well. Daniel goes on to say, as for me, Daniel, my spirit was grieved and anxious within me and the visions of my head alarmed me and they agitated me. He says, this is what I did next. I came near to one of those who stood there and I asked him the truth of all this. That Daniel finds someone standing there in his vision. He says, well, what does all this mean? And the person, and Daniel says, the person told him, said, he told me and made known to me the interpretation of these things. And he shares with him that these four great beasts that Daniel was looking at in his vision, needing an interpretation of, and if you read from the beginning of Daniel 7, you'll see all of this that is laid out before we get to verse 13 where I begin, and I would encourage you to read the entire chapter. It says, these four great beasts, which you'll see in the other verses, are four kings who shall rise out of the earth. But the saints of God, of the Most High God, shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. This is incredible when you look at this from the mindset of God. It says in verse 17 that there's these four great beasts that shall come up out of the earth, but then there's a but. Here's a place where a big but is not a bad thing in any sense of the word. It says, but the saints of the Most High God shall receive the kingdom. So regardless of what is going on in culture then and in society now, the saints of the Most High are to receive the kingdom of God. And as we receive the kingdom of God, we have it forever, even forever and ever. It is what we should bring into our possession. The journey in God that we've all embarked in has as its core the kingdom of God. This cannot be overstated. It cannot be overspoken. This is the key to life and life in its fullness is living out from the kingdom of God. Having the kingdom of God inside of us is a sure thing that brings victory and accomplishment and allows us to be men and women who move as overcomers. But this kingdom that is the core of everything that we believe as born-again believers, the kingdom is the rule of an eternal sovereign God over all the universe. As well, the kingdom is the everlasting realm, meaning it is what exists now and will exist forever. So the kingdom is not just for now, but the kingdom of God will exist forever. Somebody say forever. But also regarding the kingdom, in it, God is sovereign. Say God is sovereign. Say God is sovereign. So in the kingdom of God, God is sovereign, which means that God runs stuff. Everything is about God. Everything centered in God. According to him, he's the one who matters the most, and God has not changed his mind yet. God still believes that this thing is all about him. 
He still believes that he is God and God alone, and there's not another thing named that is greater than him, and he calls himself sovereign, meaning I'm in control of everything, and what happens, I allow it, and what shuts down, I did it. I am God who agrees with myself about everything that I'm going to do, even bringing your life into the earth in the time that you're in now. God agreed with himself that this would be the dispensation that I would put you in, and it also says that in his sovereignty, he's appointed Jesus Christ to rule, somebody shout forever. forever. Yeah, he's appointed Jesus to be the ruler of the kingdom of God forever. So Matthew 4 reveals Jesus as the carrier of the message of the kingdom. He comes into the region saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand or interpreted by some people, it's near. It was at hand, it was near. Why was it at hand? Why was it near when he came in? Because Jesus is the kingdom of God. There are a lot of people that don't want to talk about the kingdom of God, that don't believe it's something that exists, don't believe it's something that is already here. But what we must understand is that the kingdom is and the kingdom was and the kingdom for shall ever be. The kingdom has already come and the kingdom is coming. So it's dimensional in its explanation and in its revealing. But the kingdom of God is at hand because Jesus is at hand. And then according to Matthew, uh, Matthew 6, 13, it says of Jesus, who is God, that thine is the kingdom. It says that not only are you the kingdom, Jesus, but you're the ultimate power and you're the glory in the universe forever. So what do we have to do? I, I believe that in the body of Christ, we have jumped over this theology. Now, we, what we've got to understand is that God does not have the culture on hold just to have it on hold. I believe the culture is on hold so the body of Christ can catch up. Let me say that over here. I believe the body of Christ is on hold. I mean, the things are on hold in society so the body of Christ can awaken and say, here's our opportunity to get into the place that God would have us to be as this sovereign, eternal kingdom that he's put in place. I believe this is what God is up to. And many people are upset. I can't go to church. I can't get back into church. I'll be glad when the church opens up. And I think that that is because of a lot of poor theology that has not helped us to realize who we really are. I don't have to wait for the church to open up. I just do what the church would do if it was open. The kingdom has to be discovered by the body of Christ, and I think we've missed this. I think we've leapt over it because of a little struggle for it, but, but, but the kingdom is challenging everything inside of us, and a lot of people don't want that. The kingdom needs to be discovered by the body of Christ as a principled lifestyle system that should be walked out and demonstrated, which means the kingdom should be practiced. It's not just something we pick up and put on on Sunday. It's not just something we put on when we've got a revival. It's not something we pick up and put on when there's a conference in town. No, this is a lifestyle management system that should be walked out, especially by believers. Hear me, I want to slow down and talk about this a little bit and just bring you, hear me in Marietta, bring you some, some understanding about how the world systems work. The world system advocates gain and it advocates advancement. It advocates gain and it advocates advancement for individuals and entities that they serve and are served by. So there are individuals and there are entities who are in the world system and they serve that world system. <laughs> They, 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 when we go in and we give labor, we are serving the world system. When we spend money in it, we are serving the world system. But I'm not necessarily talking about us. I'm talking about the people who are in the world because I'm talking about their thinking. They want to gain and they want to advance, but they do it through mostly ungodly practices and gains. 
Their advancement comes from ungodly ways. Their gains come from ungodly things. If you look at most of your Fortune 100 companies, many of them are centered here in our city in Atlanta. If you look at them, if, if you look at their mission statements, their mission statements are not tied into doing what advances the kingdom of God. At the very core of their mission statements are not missions that would bring about gain for God and its kingdom. Their desired end, where you go to work every day, is desired end for, the mo for 99% of you is not for the sake of Jesus being lifted up. But on the other hand is the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God, too, is about gain and advancement. But it's about gain and advancement that is founded on righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout, that's the kingdom of God. So for the believer, for the body of Christ, the kingdom of God should be the only way that we conduct our lives. It should be the thing that we long and hunger to flow out of us into everything where we go. I'm helping us to become productive in our salvation instead of struggling and straining and just trying to get home. But our way of conducting ourselves individually, corporately, entrepreneurially, occupationally, in order for us to attain advancement should not be by the soulish means of the world systems. They have ways that they do things that are ruled by their soul which is the house for your emotions and your will and your mind. But the way we do things is not by power, it's not by might, but it's by the Spirit of God. And we do them for the purposes of establishing Jesus' rule in the earth. In my cubicle this week, among my team, I will establish Jesus' rule in the earth. That's a kingdom employee. In my marriage, in my finances, in my neighborhood, I will do what needs to be done that shows Jesus' mind and Jesus' rule in the earth. And I believe that it will gain and I believe that it will bring advancement and I'll not move any manipulation. I'll not use any co uh, corruption. I'll not move, use lies or deceit. I won't use anything ungodly to do it because in my kingdom, those things aren't necessary. When people see the kingdom of God through those who carry its nature and its character and its power and, and, and its servitude, when, when, when people see that, you know what? It, it should draw them in. What is the church doing that it's not drawing people in to the point that people become disciples? Not drawing them in so they've got a church to put on their resume. Not drawing them in so they can just say, yeah, I, I go to church every, every Sunday morning. No, I'm talking about drawing people in because they see this lifestyle management system that we follow that it makes them just want to be a part of it and they follow us like they follow Jesus just to see what he was going to do next and what would life be like in him. The teacher is watching us and they're waiting for something. They don't know exactly what they're waiting on, but they know that there's more that should be coming out of the church than is coming out of the church. That's why as soon as they have a hardship, they want to turn to the church. But they know, the creature does, that there's something that's supposed to be coming out of the church that's more than just a song, more than just a dance, more than just a concert, more than just a revival. Year after year after year, you don't plan revivals. Revivals break out. But the same old thing over and over and the creature is waiting for the church to be revealed. Why do people wait for the church to reveal? Because God placed all the desire to see and experience the kingdom of God in all people. Romans 1 makes it clear to us that some people just exchange the creator for the created thing. <laughs> So God puts the knowledge of who he is in everybody. Some people just choose not to follow after the way of God, and they would rather have what God created than the one that created. Give me mercy. 
give me finances, give me a job, give me a home, give me a house, give me a car. Those are things that God created, and people get attached to the created thing and leave the creator alone, but the creature really waiting for the creator to be seen. God places this in everybody. Have you noticed the response and the attention that major corporations and people get when they do good things? Doesn't matter who the corporation is. They do something good, they get a lot of attention. We've, we've, we've even seen drug dealers in community, numbers runners in, in community, people who do evil in communities back up trucks and open up and give turkeys away and give dinners away and give clothes away and, and take care of people and, and bless them. Why? Why? Because everybody knows it's good to do good. No matter who you are, it's good to do good. But these things manifest out of antichrist systems. Well, why do they do that? They do that because people are attracted to good. Agencies, governments, antichrist institutions and associations, they're all attracted to good things. Well, how does that happen? Because good things are what God has wired us to be attracted to because good things come from God. And they come from his kingdom. Evil does, good things that evil people do aren't because evil says do it. It's because God who's sovereign all moves them to do it. He says, I'm going to take the wealth out of wicked and I'm going to give it to the righteous in order that they can do this or do that. Well, where does the good come from? It comes from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from from above it comes from God so the creature is waiting to see God they may not interpret it this way but in my strong humble but accurate opinion I do understand and know that as they're looking for good they don't know they're looking for it in God but that's where it comes from so if I we we we, we, we got a good thing and often you can have a good thing and misuse it because you don't understand the value of it. You don't know how good it really is to you because it's so, the kingdom is near, because it's so near to you that you step by it. You walk by it. Because you've been positioned in it, you don't really think about how valuable it is because you confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart, and now you're in it. And we, ne when we get close to it, but we never look at nurturing it and developing it and making it better inside of us because it's just so close to us. You ever been taken for granted? Yeah. You, 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 have you ever been in a place where it looked like people just looked straight past you and overlooked you? I, I, I know that happens in a city as busy as Atlanta. I know what happens in an area that is industrious as Atlanta is, where everybody's trying to make a name for themselves and getting up and going, and people doing it, and people just walk over you and walk past you and don't even recognize what you bring to the table. Well, the kingdom of God says, where are my people, and does the church really want the kingdom, or does the church want its content? I'm getting nosy and personal now. Does the church really want the kingdom of God or does it want religious forms? Does it want robes and, and, and organs? Does it want good shouting and, and dancing? Does it want religious systematic ways of, of doing things? Or does the church want the kingdom? Does it want forms of godliness, but does it want true godliness? The kingdom of God is being waited for in earnest expectation by people who want to see what the kingdom really looks like. Daniel moves into a place where he has revelation of the kingdom of God. My prayer is that you're getting greater revelation of the kingdom of God. Father, let it be released. Let it be activated. Let it be stirred. Let it begin to transform us. Let it begin to awaken us. Let it begin to shift us and realign us. Let it transform us and make us new. Let it change our appetites and our desires. Let it change our thirst and our hunger. Open the eyes of our understanding and let us begin to see what the kingdom is really like.
I think that, that, that I think that that's where God wants his church to be. He said in Matthew 6 33, seek it first, seek it, seek, seek it first. Let it be the first thing that comes to your mind when you have a matter and a situation is the kingdom of God. Daniel gets a revelation of the kingdom of God. Prophesy, I've got a revelation of the kingdom of God. To be more specific, it happens, turn to Daniel verse 7, verse 9, it, hand, it happens in the courtroom of heaven. This is where we see this happening. I hope you don't have to go anywhere because I got somewhere God needs to take you. Daniel 7, verse 9 through 11, Daniel says, man, I kept looking until thrones were placed for the assessors with the judge. And the Ancient of Days took his seat. My God, can you imagine seeing God take his seat? What did he look like, Daniel? His garment was white as snow. And the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame. Its wheels were burning fire. Verse 10 says, a stream of fire came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. That's why I'm saying, if you don't learn how to worship down here, you're going to have a problem in heaven. Because you will be worshiping him. I don't want to lift my hands. You might not be getting in. I, I don't want to bow. I don't want to lay prostrate. No, you better learn how to worship here because in heaven you will minister to him. Thousands and thousands minister to him. And ten thousands, ten thousand rose up and stood before him. There is no lackadaisicalness in heaven. There is no casualty in heaven. We're serving a sovereign, formal God. And in his presence, we arise, for he is king of the universe. My God, he is. A thousand thousands ministered to him, and 10,000 times 10,000 rose up and stood before him. The judge was seated, though. The court was in session, and the books were open. Verse 11 says, Daniel looked then because of the sound of the great words which the horn was speaking. That's why musicians on instruments can prophesy. It says the horn was speaking. Then say a man or a woman was speaking. It said the instrument was speaking. Let me stay in my lane. He says, I watched until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. Somebody shout, the devil's going to hell. Verse 12 says, Daniel's seeing all this even before it happens. And as for the rest of the beast, their power of dominion, principalities, powers, rules of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, demons and imps. As for the rest of these beasts, their power of dominion was taken away. Yet their lives were prolonged for the duration of their lives was fixed for a season and a time. Hear me, let me give you context. Daniel 7 is a prophecy that spans the conflicts that happen between the first coming and the second coming of Jesus. The first coming of Jesus we see in Matthew 4. In the book of Revelations, we see the second coming of Jesus. This is why it's important to get into the spirit. Daniel got up in the spirit and saw all the way from Daniel into Revelation. I prophesy to you that in your intimacy with God, the Lord is going to begin to reveal to you things you've never seen before, ways you never thought you could walk before, imagination and revelations that will give you advancement for the kingdom of God which will bring great fruit into your life. The Lord will open your eyes that you may see and carry out the will of the Lord. And the Lord says, and it shall be fruitful. Give the Lord a praise. I'm seeing further than I am. I'm seeing in different ways. I'm seeing different things. I'm seeing answers. I'm seeing direction. I'm seeing revelation. I'm seeing truth. I'm seeing business. I'm seeing opportunity. I'm seeing a spouse. I'm seeing children who are transformed by the power of God in the presence of God. I'm seeing. God wants
wants you in a place where you can see. Daniel put the kingdom first and God opened his eyes. You got major decisions to make but you can't see. It's because your eyes have been blind by making decisions according to the way of the world. But now God wants you to align yourself with the kingdom. And when you align, your eyes will open. Say possess. Possess is the key word in Daniel 7, 18. The word possess. The word possess means to take hold of to hold on to, to occupy. Daniel speaks this word. Hear me clearly. We are in between the first coming of Christ and the one that is to come, which is the second coming. We're in the middle of that. We are in a tight place because of the dispensation that God has placed us in. What we're experiencing in our culture has we've never seen the likes of before. What we are dealing with from a medical standpoint, we've never seen the likes of before. What's happening to happening, having to happen in society, we've never seen the likes of this before. But we're in a tight place. Why? It's because God has placed us in the tight place. But if he's put me in the tight place, he's given me grace in the place to overcome. He tells Paul, my grace is sufficient. There may be a layoff. They may be the firing of people. There may be the realigning of corporations. But yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, my grace is sufficient. Our assignment as believers is to take hold of and hold on to the kingdom. You hear people talking about, man, I'm about to lose my mind. Man, I'm about to freak out. I, I don't know what's going on, man. I don't know what, what, what's happening. No, 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 that, you, you can't get in that. Why? Because your assignment is to hold on to the kingdom no matter how doubtful people are speaking. You, 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 your place is to hold on to the kingdom regardless of how confused and overwhelmed that people become. You're supposed to hold on to the kingdom of God. Hold on to the word of God, the principles of God, the communication of God, the precepts of God. You're supposed to hold on to what the book re writes about. That's what we hold on. We have not been the first people that have faced tough times. The entire New uh, Testament church was under hardship and difficulties and persecution all their life, but they hung on to the kingdom. Why do people fall apart in our culture? Because they're holding on to stuff that has no power. They're holding on to reputation. They're holding on to a house, holding on to a car, holding on to a mindset, holding on to an attitude, holding on to a behavioral system, but not holding on to the kingdom of God. Hear me in Georgia, you've got to hold on to the kingdom of God. The Lord shook the earth last Sunday all the way from Charlotte to Georgia, and he was saying, in the shaking, hold on to the kingdom. The church, can I just say this? We're not supposed to be trying to hang on the good church. Hope they sing my song today. Hope the preacher preach like I want him to preach today. I hope mother so-and-so wear that hat that she like. I hope that the person doing the announcement really mixes it up today. God did not send us into this dispensation time to hold on the good church. Being in places in ministry, I'm telling you now, because some of you, your time has dried up in the ministry that you're in, and you're trying to hang on the good church instead of the kingdom. We must keep the main thing the main thing. What is the main thing? The main thing is the kingdom, not the church. I'm messing with your religion now. 
The main thing is not the church. The main thing is the kingdom. The church is the training and equipping institute for the church, for the kingdom. The church is where we are trained how to live in and demonstrate and advance the kingdom of God. And if that's not happening where you are, then you're probably not in a kingdom church. We've got to keep the main thing, the main thing. As a matter of fact, Jesus never even talked about church. Get your Bible out. Here we're, here, listen, listen. What is the church doing? The church is trying to perfect something that Jesus never said he'd build. Trying to protect something he never said he would build. And we wonder why the gates of hell are prevailing against us. Why does the church not have a greater seat in the seven mountains of our nation? Because we're trying to hold on to a mentality that Jesus never told us to hold on to. And the gates of hell are prevailing against us. That's why thousands of churches are closing each year. That's why hundreds of men and women are leaving the pulpit every year. Why? Because they are trying to build systems God never told us to build. And the ineffectiveness of them are wearing men and women of God down. Because we're building something Jesus never said he would build. His words were that I'll build an ecclesia, which is a kingdom-structured entity. And he said that I'll build my ecclesia and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He didn't say I'll build a church because he knew that that concept was not the concept that would advance the kingdom. I'll talk about it later. So again, we're to take hold of and hold on to the kingdom. That's what Daniel was saying prophetically to us from the book of Daniel. He's speaking not only about the future nature of the kingdom, but the present nature of it. And we have to see from this perspective, that the kingdom is now, and the kingdom is not yet. <laughs> Stay with me. The kingdom is now, and the kingdom is not yet. <laughs> He's my little man. He's just one month old right now. <laughs> Even though he is a man, I see it in the spirit, he's not a man yet. You follow me? <laughs> the, 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 the kingdom is now and the kingdom is not yet. Daniel talked about what would be because it wasn't yet. We are in what will, what is, but what will also be that hasn't manifested yet in its fullness. I'm living now in the kingdom to get into a greater measure of the kingdom. And Daniel 7.18 says, and in this, as you live as a saint of the most high God, you shall receive the kingdom. Look at somebody and say, but what you going to do with it? <laughs> See, I, I think that's the question God's asking the church, even in Atlanta, even in Marietta, what, what you going to do with the kingdom? I, 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 you shall receive it, he says, and possess the kingdom forever and forever and ever. And it's time for the saints of the Most High God to learn how to possess the kingdom. Every good, come on D, every good and perfect gift comes from the kingdom of God. <laughs> your coworkers, your family might not want to admit that. Unbelievers might not want to admit that. But the only thing that comes from the kingdom of God is good stuff. You want good business? It's in the kingdom of God. You want good visions? It's in the kingdom of God. You want good strategies? Business owner, entrepreneur, 
franchise developer, you, 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 want, you, you want greater logistics in your organization, they're in the kingdom of God. You, you, you want to live better married, it's in the kingdom. You, you, not, not, it's not in coming to church, it's in the kingdom. <laughs> it's not in just waving my hand, it's in the kingdom. It, it's in a lifestyle system that is in the Bible that God has given us that routes every other system in the world. It's all in the kingdom which means it's all in him because thine is the kingdom and he is the power and he is the glory and it wasn't for just when your mama lived it's forever and it ain't in just a time that you will live and your children won't experience no it's for Ever. It's forever. How can we deny him? How can we think that there's something better than what he's put together and thought it out? He's a God who works from the end to the beginning. He's a God that before he began to move, he determined how he wanted it to turn out. He's a God that put all of us through the sacrifice of his dear son Jesus into the mountain of God, into his kingdom. And he shall reign forever and ever. It's not just a song. It's a fact. Satan won't rule forever. Drugs and alcohol won't rule forever. Civil unrest won't rule forever. Riots and protests won't, won't rule forever. Unemployment won't rule forever. But his kingdom rules forever. And his kingdom rules when these things are happening. I make decisions in my life according to the kingdom of God. Do I miss it? You doggone right, I miss it. Do I blow it? Yeah. Do I sometimes live from a kingdom that I'm not of? Yes, I do. Just like you do. Do I sometimes take hold of a kingdom that is not the kingdom of God? Yes, yeah, sometimes in my words and my thoughts and my deeds. Yeah. But I'm always running to get back into the kingdom. When I find myself missing God and moving into something too soon or not at all, and I end up in the pig's trough of life, and realize that my brothers and sisters in the kingdom are eating better than me, I get up and dust myself off and I run back and I see a king who's standing there with his arms wide open and he welcomes me back in. That's what I love about the kingdom. It's full of love. It's based on love. It's not based on my performance. I can't do enough to get God to accept me. So I don't live by performance. I live by his love for me. And knowing it's unconditional, not the love of man or woman, it's the love of God. And I receive that love and I run back to him. And he re-reams me. And he re-robes me with the blood of Jesus. And he lays out a meal for me to eat of his word and his principles. That the next time I feel like I want to end up in a pig's trough, I'll be reminded of how good and how pleasant the goodness of God is. Because I've tasted and seen. And I don't ever want to taste anything else. And sometimes you might mess up and nibble over here and nibble over there, <laughs> but your appetite is the kingdom. That's where you get your nourishment from. That's where you get built up and refueled and refilled. And it don't happen in good church. It happens in a right, intimate relationship with Jesus. That the more I give myself to him, the more he gives his kingdom to me. And the more I pour out on him in worship and words of adoration, the more of his kingdom gets inside of me. And the more I turn over my desires and my hopes and my dreams and appetites that are not of the kingdom 
He replaces them with what sought the kingdom. He puts in me that which will replace what needs to be out of me. Because he loves me being in his kingdom. And I love being in his kingdom. I said this earlier to many of you. And some of you might not be in the kingdom of God, but you've been in church. I'm trying to help us to understand that this is the place where believers should live from, the kingdom. And if you're in a place and you know your time is up and you know you need to shift from that place and get into a place that is teaching the kingdom and expounding on the kingdom and, and, and fostering kingdom lifestyles and stewarding kingdom lifestyles, then, then you got to make a decision. It can't be about a denomination. It can't be about a relationship you're in. If, if it's not building you for the place God's called you to live, we can't have our loyalties more centered in man than we do God need to join this ministry today and then there's some of you that you 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 realize that your life needs to be shifted and from what I've been saying you realize man I ain't even known there was a kingdom of God I ain't even been trying to live in that kingdom I've been doing my thing on the street I've been doing my thing the way I do it I'm the Lord of me I've, I've been my own king. That's why he says he's king of kings, because he knew there were some who would make themselves kings, or other people would flaunt them as kings. But I'm telling you today, man of God, woman of God, teenager, college student, you need to get into the kingdom by making Jesus your Lord. And it's not that hard to do. I thought I was that guy that I was my own Lord, I was my own King. I had a lot going for me. And then one day I came into a place where I realized that my Lordship wasn't good for me because I didn't make me, I can't sustain me. God made you, he's the only one that can sustain you. And now it's, time, it's no coincidence that you're listening to me, that you found this stream. It's because God wants you in the kingdom of God now come out of that place of darkness where you can't even live in peace how do you know I'm talking to you because the last stack you got you have no peace about it you can't even enjoy the stack because you, you you're not peaceful about it it came in wrong ways and you and you sleep like this and you walk around like this and you're always on the lookout because you have no peace. Peace is found in him. It's a part of his kingdom. And I'm inviting you to make him Lord of your life today. All you have to do, and I know this is different. There's not an aisle to walk down. I said that earlier, but, but you got a phone. I know you got a phone. I know you got a phone. It might be a six, but it still works. You don't have to have an iPhone 11 to get in the kingdom. A six or an eight will do just fine. A flip phone will work. A burner, bro. If you got to text it and then throw it away as a burner, let it be. I ain't saying nothing. What goes on in Marietta stays on in Marietta. But let this be the day that you text K-O-G-L-I-F-E to 313131, and we will be there to love you and receive you. You know it's time to leave the church that you're in. You know it's time to leave the darkness you're in and get saved. And there's people there to pray for you, to help get your life on track. And I don't think that we're just a prayer line, because we're not just being a prayer line, but not holding you accountable to some church connection, whether it's ours or somebody else's, because we know that's the way of God's heart and mind for his sons and daughters. But today, if God's telling you to join, Go to the line, pick up your phone and do that, or dial 678-387-3886. Go do it, do it now, do it now, do it now. If he's calling you to, 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 that I want to pray, have you pray for, go do it now. If he's calling you in the church membership or, 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 or to, to join this ministry, come do it now, do it now, but don't wait. We love you at Life Center International. It's one of our key components. We don't love the best, but we try to love the best that we can. And I've got a team that's in Marietta, Georgia. You're in Marietta. I got a team in Marietta. 
Everything ain't in North Carolina. The team is in Marietta as well, ready to serve you and help you grow and develop. We, we didn't just put this together like a fly-by-night uh, 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 experiment. We put time into it because the most important thing to us is people, and we want to serve. If you came on late and you haven't given, go to lifecentermarietta.org, hit the donate button, seed into the kingdom of God. If it's first time with us, there's no rule that says that if the first time you come, you can't give. You ever been in a store the first time and bought something? There was no rule about buying something because the first time you went in a store. Let's not play games in the kingdom. Well, I've been in a lot of churches, a lot of things. Yeah, you've been to a lot of the same restaurants too that you had a bad experience at one. Wendy's jacked your food up, but you went to another Wendy's. Maybe the, 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 the Wendy's in McDonough wasn't as sharp as the Wendy's in Jonesboro, but you didn't give up on Wendy's. You went back. Let's give God a fair chance. I love you with the love of the Lord. We'll be back on Wednesday night. You can stream through lifecenterinternational.org. At 7 o'clock, you can stream. Love you with the love of the Lord. I appreciate you. Everyone here in, in, that's in this sanctuary, let's just thank God for being faithful and awesome and wonderful. I love you. God bless you. Make sure you bring somebody else with you next week, okay? God bless you. It's Apostle Terrell, Life Center, International Marietta. Peace. I'm out. God bless you. Five o'clock. I'll see you.